Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today. It's morning here in Minnesota, so we're going to get started. My name is Sally Head Dahlquist, and I'm president of Immunochemistry Technologies. I'll be presenting a short webinar today, about 20 to 30 minutes, and we greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch it today. Today, I'm going to compare our methods for in vitro and in vivo analysis of cell death. I'm going to show you examples of how you can easily quantify cell death directly in cultured cells in vitro using FLICA or in live animals in vivo using FLEVO. This is the third in our webinar series on FLEVO, so I encourage you to watch the other two for more technical details about how it works. Assisting me today is Allison Westcott, our customer service manager. So thanks, Allison. Your phone has been muted. However, we encourage and welcome your questions, which we'll re we will respond to directly after the webinar is over. So just please type your question into the chat dialog box on the right side of your screen and select Send to Host, and we'll respond to you after the meeting. If you have any technical dis difficulties during the webinar, please send us a chat and Allison will help. She will be posting a video recording of the webinar, so watch out for an email from her in the next few days with a link to the recording so you will be able to view it again anytime and share it with your colleagues. I'm Sally Head Dulquist, President of Immunochemistry Technologies, and I have a BS in genetics and cell biology and an MBA. I was the first one of the first employees at ICT, so I started out working out the lab. So I started out working in the lab, and then when the founders retired in 2016, I bought them out. So I've been working in, involved in almost every aspect of growing the company, including the development of Flicka and Flebo. And like you, we're on a mission to help cure diseases. At ICT, we do this by building a better assay, and in this case, to study cell death. Because ironically, like many treatments, like chemotherapy, have to kill the cells to cure the disease. And we've developed several reagents, including Flicka, that detects dead and dying cells in vitro, and Flevo, that detects them in vivo, so you can monitor the effectiveness of treatment. For Flicka, that's used in cultured cells, and Flevo is used in live animals, so you can tell right away if the treatment is working or not. Today, I'll tell you about how these reagents work by going over some data with different cell types and models and explaining the experiments and what instruments were used for detection. These powerful reagents give you a lot of options when designing your experiments, and I'll compare them and show you different ways to use them to set up other experiments. These products have been used by researchers all over the world and are highly cited in over 2,000 publications. So they've been used in a lot of different experiments, cell types, and animal models. And in addition to the publications, we'd love to hear from you about any of the experiments you're doing. And if you need any details or have questions about how to set anything up or determine your controls, please contact us. So what are Flicka and Flevo? Well, they're biomarkers that measure caspase activity. They are labeled caspase inhibitors and form a covalent bond with active caspase enzymes. They're non-cytotoxic and bind preferentially to the active site cysteine of caspases, thereby enabling visualization of caspase activity in vitro for Flicka or in vivo for Flevo. And once you add them to the media or inject directly into the animal, they bind to the active caspase and form a strong covalent bond, but won't react with procaspases or inactive enzymes. And then they remain inside the cell for detection. They measure caspase activity, which is a hallmark of apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. It features the activation of initiator caspases that activate effector caspases to cleave cellular substrates. Apoptotic cells demonstrate cytoplasmic and nuclear condensation, DNA damage, formation of apoptotic bodies, maintenance of an intact plasma membrane, and exposure of surface molecules targeting intact cell corpses for phagocytosis and apoptosis is triggered by caspase enzymes. They're a family of cysteine proteases that serve as critical mediators in the apoptotic pathway. Caspases are the enzymes that start dismantling the cell from within and are an early and definitive indicator, indicator of programmed cell death. Using Flicka and Flevo to detect caspases means that you only label cells in the process of dying. For doing cellular analysis, we have many different reagents that you can use. The Flicka reagents are available in red and green and NIR660, and the Flevo reagents 
for use in animals are available in green and red and near infrared at 690 as well as 747. Flicka and Flevo are very easy to use. For Flicka, you just add it to the media, incubate, and wash. For Flevo, you just inject it directly into the animal and let it circulate. After labeling, you can add additional stains or fix the cells. And with Flevo, you can even perfuse the animal and do further studies ex vivo. Which reagent is best for your experiment all depends on which instrument you are going to use for analysis. For imaging, I've listed just a few of the instruments that are compatible, and these are representative so check out what's out there, and we're always trying the reagents with other instruments. So cast bases are definitive and easily measured using Flicka and Flevo. They're easy to use. You just add to the Petri dish or direct, inject directly into the animal, and they will label the apoptotic dying cells. You don't have to lyse the cells or prep the animals, and the reaction is fast. It starts happening within 15 minutes of adding to the plate or injection into the animal, and they don't react with pro-cast bases or inactive enzymes like antibodies do, so you don't get false positives. They're non-cytotoxic with minimal background staining. And as a biomarker of apoptosis, cast bases are a relevant molecular target that can be accurately detected with Flicka and Flevo. So let's take a look at some of the experiments that we've done and our customers have shared with us. Flevo and Flicka are easily detected with a microscope. Here, we're looking at green fluorescence with an excitation at 48 and emission at 520. In the Flicka picture at left, we see three different cells. These are human monocytic leukemia THP1 cells that were treated with sterosporine to induce apoptosis. They were washed, then duly stained with uh, FAM Flicka polycaspase inhibitor re reagent, which is green, and a blue DNA stain hooks. Only one of the three cells is apoptotic. That's the middle stain middle cell. It's stained positive for caspase activity. It's green with Famflica, and it also is stained positive for hooks. It has many bright blue spots indicating that the DNA is breaking down and the cell is beginning to die. The cell in the lower right-hand corner is alive. It doesn't have any green staining from Flicka and has concentrated blue DNA. The cell in the upper left is necrotic. There's no green and the blue a hook stain is scattered throughout. On the right, looking at the Flevo experiment, these images are breast cancer tumors grown on the back of a mouse. They were treated with arsenic trioxide, which is a drug, and then monitored through a window chamber system and then injected with our green FAM Flevo reagent for 30 minutes and then imaged. So once you inject Flevo, it circulates throughout the body and enters the cells. If there's active caspases inside the cell, the Flevo binds to it and remains inside the cell. Flevo starts working within 15 minutes of injection, so you can tell almost immediately if the drug is working or not. Here, we can easily see that the chemotherapy is working because dying apoptotic tumor cells turn green. We can also specifically identify which tumor cells are dying. Those are the green dots in the pictures. And if the treatment is not working, the cells won't turn color, and you know you need to try a different drug ASAP. If the treatment is working and the cells are dying, the tumor will turn green or red or other color depending on which assay you use. Flevo and Flicka can also be used with multiple stains. So here are some microscope images showing some duly stained tissue sections. The Flicka data on the left shows a human tumor xenograft that was grown subcutaneously in nude mice. Then unfixed frozen 10 micron sections were prepared and stained with our green Flicka polycaspase reagent and counterstained with DAPI, which is another blue nuclear stain. A low level of caspase activity was detected in um, the image A compared with uh, picture B, which reveals extensive green staining in cells throughout the tissue section, indicating apoptosis. In the picture at right, using Flevo, um, our green fan flevo was injected IV through the femoral vein of a young rat and then circulated for 30 minutes. The urinary bladder was excised, processed, and the nuclear, nuclei were also stained blue with DAPI. The majority of released urothelial cells in the urinary bladder revealed activated caspases, which indicates that apoptosis contributes to urothelial cell loss 
in the rat early postnatal period, which is indispensable for fast urothelial remodeling during development. Using Flevo did not induce postmortem apoptosis artificially by killing the animal or by removing the tissue from the animal. Flow cytometry is a really valuable tool for researchers, and you can use that easily with Flevo and Flicka. You can use suspension cells or trypsinize them or excise cells and then run them on a flow cytometer. In the Flicka experiment on the left, Jercat cells were treated with sterosporine, then labeled with our 660 Flicka kit to detect caspase activity. The negative cells are shown in the red histogram on the left. Apoptotic cells are shifted to the right as shown in the black histogram. In the FLEVO data on the right, in this study, we're looking at leukocytes from bone marrow from three different mice and then ran them on a flow. These were C57BL S126 mice, which were treated with morphine and LPS, LPS only, or a placebo for 48 hours. 45 minutes prior to sacrifice, our green fan FLEVO was injected IV in the tail vein, so it circulated 45 minutes, and then the bone marrow was collected. This shows an increase in apoptosis in the bone marrow leukocytes of morphine-treated animals that were also exposed to LPS. One difference with these techniques is that Flicka is used with cultured cells, so they can be analyzed with a plate reader, while animals stained with Flevo would not typically be used on a plate reader. While it's possible to do it with Flevo, most people use a flow cytometer if they want to quantitate Flevo. So here's some data from a plate reader using Flicka, the in vitro reagent, to analyze samples. These are Jercat cells that were treated with sterosporine and then labeled with our red Flicka probe, SRVAD FMK, and analyzed with the excitation at 550 and emission at 590. Apoptotic induced cells in the right bar are about five times higher than the control non-induced cells at the left. Another difference and most unique feature of Flevo is that it can, be de 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 it can be detected on whole animal imagers. So I've included a few images of Flevo here, but not Flicka, because this is simply not possible to do with the cultured cells. On the left are colo 205 colon cancer tumors grown on the back of female nude mice for 27 days. They were treated with trail at different doses, then imaged with red SR Flevo using an IVIS instrument. The high dose of trail is killing more tumor cells as they fluoresce brighter with SR Flevo on the left. You can also use it to adjust each dose until you find the right amount with minimal side effects for that animal. On the right, here we are looking at anti-tumor effects of an experimental anti-cancer vaccine, and it was working. By day 13, shown here, the tumor was nearly gone in the treated mice, and the mice that received saline had large, fast-growing tumors. We used NIR Flevo at 690 on a CRI maestro instrument to see that the vaccine was working in the treated mice. Flevo is truly unique in that we can directly analyze the animal, and we can use it to help guide researchers towards finding the right treatment or vaccine. Flicka and Flevo are most commonly used to analyze tumor and cancer cells, and this is very easily done, and you can get more info when used with other stains. For Flicka, these are HL60 cells labeled with our green Flicka probe, as well as red PI and blue hooks to reveal four populations of cells. There are unstained live cells in A, there are necrotic red, red cells in B, which are stained with PI, and late apoptotic cells in C, which are stained with Flicka and PI, and cells in early apoptosis that are just stained green with FAM Flicka in D. On the right in the Flevo example, these pictures were taken with a CRI maestro imaging system using our NIR 747 FLEVO to non-invasively monitor the efficacy and time kinetics of an experimental anti-cancer drug. So after receiving a placebo control on the left or an experimental drug on the right, the xenograft M-nude tumor-bearing mice, these are MIA PACA pancreatic tumors, they were, the mice were injected IV with NIR 747 an image non-invasively at various time points, and the tumors were excised. Here we're looking at 22 hours. The apoptotic tumor tissues fluoresced brightly in the experimental mice, indicating that the drug had an apoptotic effect and was killing the tumor. Here's an example of labeling colon cancer cells. On the left, Flicka was used to label colon carcinoma cell line HCT116. 
These cells were seated on a plate exposed to a drug for 48 hours, then labeled with FAM FLICA for one hour, and then trypsinized. When analyzed with the flow cytometer, 69% of the cells were apoptotic compared to the control, which we didn't show the control data here. Using FLEVO, for example, on the right, that shows a Diffie tumor xenograft, which is another colorectal, colorectal cancer cell line. In this case, it was grown on the flank of an athymic nude mouse. It's imaged with our near-infrared FLEVO 747 on a Lycor Pearl small amid small animal imager using NIR-747 on the 800 channel. You could also use the reagents to look at organs such as liver. And looking at the FLICA example on the left, these are adherent mouse hepatocytes. These researchers were studying acetaminophen overdose, which causes hepatic failure. They used our green FAM FLICA DEVD to detect caspase 37 to understand the role of apoptosis in hep hepatotoxicity. These are cultured mouse hepatocytes from male C3 HEB FEJ mice. And about 60% of the experimental cells were apoptotic that you can see in the lower cell. In the FLEVO example on the right, here we're looking at ischemia in rat liver. This is segmental normal thermic ischemia of the liver was induced for two hours. And six hours post reperfusion, FAM FLEVO was injected into the portal veins of the rats and circulated for only 10 minutes. Then they prepared five micron cryosections and counterstained the nuclei in blue using DAPI. A bright green signal from FAM FLEVO is clearly seen in hepatocytes containing active caspases distributed around the vessel in the ischemic condition which is bottom, compared to the control non-ischemic condition tissue on the top. FLICA and FLEVO work very well to label neurons and brain cells. Using FAM FLICA, the green reagent, here is an example of cultured neurons, primary rat hippocampal neurons on the left, which are also stained with hooks, again, which is blue to label all the nuclei, and propidium iodide, which is red, to label all the necrotic membrane-compromised cells. This way, we can see three populations of cells in A, which is a composite, and shows four cells. One live healthy cell is only blue, which is the cell on the left. One cell is nearly, is it, one cell is an early apoptosis. It is blue and green. And two cells are in late apoptosis and becoming necrotic. They are red, green, and blue, and look pink in A, meaning they are becoming membrane compromised and are in the late stages of apoptosis and have caspase activity rather than uh, full necrosis. If a cell were necrotic but not apoptotic, it would only be red with PI, as shown in C. But we know it's a composite, so we know those membrane compromised cells with PI also are apoptotic. In the example on the right with FAM FLEVO, again, which is our green reagent, we're looking at brain sections. FLEVO crosses the blood-brain barrier and was used to study brain damage in diabetic rats. At the top is the control rat, and on the bottom is the STZ diabetic rat that's eight weeks old. 30 minutes before sacrificing the animals, FAM FLEVO was injected IV, then 20 micron frozen sections of the periaqueductal gray section of the brain were prepared and counterstained with NISL, which is red fluorescent and identifies all neurons. Dying apoptotic neurons appear yellowish green with FAM FLEVO. In this model, diabetic animals show greater levels of caspase activity in the periaqueductal gray than control animals. Both reagents can also be used to look at eye disease. And here, FAM FLICA DEVD was used to detect caspase 37 activity to analyze apoptosis in human corneal fibroblast cultures, looking at normal versus keratoconus fibroblasts that were treated with hydrogen peroxide. Keratoconus is a condition that causes irregular corneal astigmatism and is a leading indication for corneal transplantation. All cells were treated with hydrogen peroxide and then labeled with FAM FLICA. Keratoconus cells on the bottom show a significant increase in caspase 37 activity compared with the normal cells on the top. And the um, negative cells are black in the background in this picture. Using FAM FLEVO on the right to detect apoptotic 
retinal glial cells in rat eyes, the animals were injected intravitreally IVT with green FAMFLEVO, and retinal flat mounts were created seven days after the ONT procedure. Fluorescent spots indicating FLEVO-positive retinal glial cells are seen in the experimental eye on the bottom, but are absent in the control eye on the top. T-cells and lymphocytes can be quantified with FLICA and FLEVO. And using FLICA on the left, mouse EL4 T lymphocytes were cultured with a control or with mitomycin and labeled red with SR FLICA to measure caspase 37. Red histograms show caspase activity. In the control A, apoptosis is low compared to the red histogram in B, which is shifted to the right. In the example for FLEVO on the right, three types of mice the P3 double positive and M delta pro and P3 double negative animals retreated, uh, that's the T samples, with a single dose of four, of four GYs of gamma radiation, and tissues were labeled in vivo with green FAM flevo. Results show a 13-fold increase in apoptosis above the control levels in the thymus and a four-fold increase in the spleen for the P53 double positive mice, but little apoptosis above the untreated, that's the U samples, controls, was observed for the M delta pro or P53 double negative mice. This tells us in this experiment that M delta pro is substantially impaired for P53 mediated apoptosis in response to DNA damage in this experiment. In this last example I'll present today is analyzing infections, and you can easily use FLICA and FLEVO to study different types of infections from salmonella to HIV. So using FLICA, here are salmonella-infected extruding cells that are undergoing inflammatory cell death. They're actually on top of an infected polarized C2BBE1 monolayer of epithelial cells with wild-type salmonella constitutively expressing M. cherry, which is red. The bacterial-induced extrusion is accompanied by an inflammatory cell death characterized by caspase-1 activation. The researchers used the green FAMFLICA YVAD to label caspase-1 positive cells green. And cells are also labeled with hooks that you see in the background. In the FLEVO experiment on the right, this uses our FLEVO NIR747 and includes our optional 747 free dye control. In this experiment, adult wild-type BALB C mice were either given a control, which are animals one and two on the left, or an intranasal inoculation with the HSV1 virus, which are animals three and four on the right. Uh, and that's absorbed through the epithelium and is known to induce apoptosis in the brain. Seven days later, at the peak of infection, the mice were injected IV in the tail vein with FLEVO, NIR747, those are animals one and four on the far left and right, or no reagent, which is animal number two, or the 747 free dye control, which is animal number three. And then they were imaged seven hours later with a care stream in vivo FX Pro imager. We can see strong caspase activity located in the brain of the animal number four, which was treated with HSV1 and injected with the NIR747 reagent. So it is bright red. Uh, the liver is the route of clearance for FLEVO tracers. And in animals number one and three, we see minimal signal detected in the liver region of the HSV animals injected with a free dye control, that's animal number three, and of the uninfected mouse injected with NIR747, that's animal number one. So those are your controls. Three of the mice, animals one, three, and four, with the red tails, they were injected with some of the reagent and this shows where the reagent is likely to pool after IV injection in the tail. So you see animal number three, even the free dye control, has some red signal in the tail. Well, that wraps up our data for today. If you have any question, uh, questions about the webinar, please feel free to send them through the chat box, and we'll respond directly to you or give us a call directly. And if you want to learn more about our products and services, please visit our website. We have a lot of resources available online to help you, such as product manuals, safety data sheets, certificates of analysis, our blog postings, and more educational materials and publications. You can also find more webinars, such as this one, on a wide variety of topics. 
from apoptosis to ELISAs. So just go to the archives on our webinars page to look at some older ones. If you have specific questions, please don't hesitate to contact us directly. We love hearing how you are using our products and helping set up new experiments. Again, thanks for tuning in today and for all the research you're doing. We here at ICT are really proud to be part of the medical research community and provide tools like Flicka and Flevo. We're here to help you, so please reach out if you have any questions. And thanks again to Allison Westcott and Kristen Pauley, our marketing team, for managing these webinars. I'm Sally Head Dahlquist, President of Immunochemistry Technologies, and it's been a pleasure pre presenting this to you, to you today. Thanks for joining us.